Do I look okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. What's up guys, Kevin here, back again with another video. This is the October coffee break. Yeah! Yay! If you guys don't know, hi, my name is Kevin. Um, I do a monthly sort of video cataloging a bunch of cool stuff that I saw. Don't you love it when your ice machine just decides to ruin my entire intro? So, um, I do a monthly video talking about releases, upcoming releases and rumors, uh, leaks and uh, some stuff from the archive or stuff that I look back on maybe years and years later. I do this once a month along with a bunch of other footwear, fashion, apparel content, as well as coffee break wouldn't be coffee without Alright, what did I say? Coffee break wouldn't be coffee break without a coffee. So this month I have coffee from Momo's Coffee. I used their beans prior, but this is their Costa Rica. Don... Don Joel? Don Joel. Um, they are a coffee roastery in Bhutan, Korea. Uh, and I really like their beans. Very interested in this haven't used it at all, and I'm gonna be using a pour-over method. I know some of you guys are probably sick of me using pour-overs, but it really is one of the best coffees. Shit's fire. White floral, orange, apple, and cane sugar. I'm gonna be making a concentrated pour-over. I'm gonna do a one to 13. Five grams of coffee. Right, 25 grams of coffee, 325 milliliters of water. I'm gonna let that breathe a little. So, let's talk about the first release. Uh, acronym Fall Winter 2023. Uh, they, so Acronym has been having kind of like an on and off season lately. Um, since their reintroduction of the P23, which I did a review on, I really liked it. And the P23 for a long time was a huge, huge, huge grail for me. And they just didn't restock it for so long. And then bang, the dry skin pair comes out, fire. They also make an updated version of it with the um, Q version with the tension zips. I thought that was really sick. But a lot of their items have been sort of sitting on shelves, sitting on like retailers, and pretty much the only things that have been selling out are mother site exclusive stuff. And like, I guess like what I mean by mother site exclusive, for those who don't know, are the products that are only available on Acronym's website. So some of their more experimental stuff, a lot of their made in Europe stuff, and the bags are all mother site exclusive. Uh, so that itself comes with its own taxes and all that other BS, but that is pretty much the only stuff that has been selling out lately, which to be honest, I think it's a blessing for those who actually want the garments. Um, but it is also something that you have to keep in mind where you don't want to buy something as soon as it comes out, you want to wait until sale or maybe even buy it secondhand used from somebody. Uh, I've seen plenty of P23s go for 400 bucks. That is unheard of. Like, especially compared to um, previous prices, I've seen P23s sell for like two grand, um, especially for the Stouts version. Um, and then now that it's been released, all the P23 models are going for pretty reasonable prices. The only pair of pants that is kind of high in value is honestly the P38. And that's just because, you know, like Aerosmith himself has been really rocking it. Um, but yeah, this current season, it has been, in my opinion, kind of some misses, some okay stuff, but nothing too crazy. Uh, they released a long version of the P30, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I do really like the P15 because it's just a classic drawstring pair of pants where it has that drop crotch, but it isn't as crazy as a P30. Um, 
I really like the P38s that dropped, but I don't like wearing Gore-Tex pants. They did just drop an encapsulated nylon one, and I do have that coming in, so review coming soon. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the J115. I get that it has a 3M arm, but it really isn't the sort of vibe that I'm going for. Um, and it kind of gives me that oversized jacket feel. Um, I do want to try out the LA6B as well as the LA6K. Um, I just can't bring myself to spending a thousand euros for like a shirt. One creator in the space that has done a review on them is uh, La Aga. Uh, I'll link his name somewhere over here and in the description. He does a lot of acronym reviews and he does them very thoroughly, much better than I can. Um, so if you guys are interested in some of the acronym products, please like check them out. Uh, but yeah, so far it's been kind of lukewarm, especially the previous season. Um, a lot of products have been hitting sales, uh, a lot of which used to never happen. One, because I think acronym didn't allow their products to hit sale. Um, but I think that changed a few years ago and then even on sale, some of the products still sort of sit. Uh, so it's a great time to get great deals. Uh, so keep an eye out if you guys are interested and purchase with caution. Next up is the Hoka Tor High and Tor Low in the limestone colors. I am a huge fan of Hoka just because their running shoes are very comfortable. Same with their trail shoes. Magnifique. Um, I did a review on their JLAL collab, great shoes, uh, probably easily one of my most worn uh, pair of shoes this year, just in general. Um, really love the colors, really love the comfort, as well as it just feels very rugged and it doesn't feel like it'll break at any time or anything like that. So also stylistically, the muted colors, perfect. I think this limestone and shifting sand color is really, really nice as well great pair. Um, I would recommend, if you can, just wait. I would wait until it hits sale. A lot of products nowadays, they don't sell out, which is great. It's a, it's a complete buyer's market right now. Um, like obviously because one, people have other expenses. Two, inflation has made everything more expensive and wages haven't gone up. So, you know, that macroeconomic scale allows you to get your hokas for cheaper. Next up is the GT2160 Winterized. So a bunch of inspo pages have been posting this, especially um, those that are more into gore pour. The color scheme is very, very similar to the Gel Burrs 2 by Kiko, um, which I mean, I'm assuming that like Kiko probably did that on purpose because he's also, I believe, still head of ASIC Sports Style. Um, these are three terrific, great colors uh, for just an everyday wear shoe. The fact that it's like winterized, I believe the upper is water resistant uh, as well. I think it'd be terrific. It also has second-handly sort of brought down the prices of the Gel Burst too. Um, they were going for like five, 500 or so for a bit and then all the prices pretty much have kind of trickled down ever since the announcement of these pairs, uh, just because a lot of people can essentially get the same look for cheaper or for retail. I'm gonna be so wired, I'm recording this after work. I'm drinking coffee at 5.38 p.m. like a reasonable adult. Also, shout out Safe House. Fire, fire cap, fire vintage t-shirt with the miles ahead print. Um, yeah, next up, song for the mute campus. Uh, they teased this a few months ago and they're dropping two colorways. One is the white with the crep outsole and the other one is the black with the white outsole. Song for the Mute, I think they had really one of the best Adidas releases um, with their Shadow Turf. I think that was honestly a huge design endeavor and I loved it. I still have my pair, still wear it regularly. Um, I was a big fan and then when they announced this campus, I was excited, but at the same time, I wasn't really feeling the model when it was uh, shown off in Paris Fashion Week. I kind of was cautiously optimistic that maybe I'll warm up to it. But now that the release just happened, I believe it happened just today, actually, you might be able to get your pairs on Adidas confirmed right now. Um, I love the model. I think it has such a cool look to it. I love the reinforced uh, like lace holes with metal. I like the 
different colored three stripes from the inside and the outside. I like how they change the shape of the campus where the sole is a bit more um, substantial, a bit rugged. Um, I also really like that the uh, the upper is that canvas, but it's like sort of distressed as well. I'm a big, big fan of that. Um, I also like the elongated tongue. There's a lot of things about Song for the Mute that I really like, and I really like their aesthetic, their vibe for it. Um, and it does give me that sort of retro futuristic vibe where there are details that are futuristic, but then the model itself feels very heritage and very like vintage in a way. Um, yeah, please go check them out. I believe they have another Shadow Turf coming out and I believe another campus. Uh, they showed off three colorways and only two released so far, so I don't know whether or not that third colorway is slated for Q4 or Q1 of next year, same with the Shadow Turf. Next up is Purple Mountain Observatory. That is, I believe, a UK brand where they do a lot of outdoorsy, gore core type of stuff. They just launched uh, their newest collection. I'm a big fan of the Ombre uh, like Windbreaker. I thought that's one of their best items that they've released. Uh, you guys should definitely check them out. They're a very small, well, not a very small brand, but they're a more low-key, smaller brand. And I think that's where a lot of those interesting ideas can come out and a lot of that best bang for your buck can potentially happen. Because a lot of these bigger brands, um, they put a lot of energy into their first few collections, get recognized, have a few hero products, and then the rest of it's kind of meh. So I do think that a lot of their stuff is of quality. So. Um, please do check them out. Again, a lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking, links are going to be in the description down below. There's no sponsorship link. Don't worry. I'm not trying to get your money. Next up is Bordeaux Clothing. So this is kind of an interesting one, and this might drum up uh, some conversation slash maybe criticism. Um, so Bordeaux Clothing is a clothing brand made by, um, I believe, I'm trying to remember his name, um, but... He is a Yeezy archive collector slash, I believe he also has produced like almost like replica Yeezy garments. Um, he launched his brand, um, it's straight out of China um, and he released his first collection. A lot of the items aren't really Yeezy-esque. Uh, they look interesting, they feel more uh, streetwear with cool materials. I haven't gotten my order in yet, but he did release one jacket that is essentially a knockoff of the Pixar jacket, which is the jacket that Ye was producing for season 9 or season 10. Um, and he he basically made a replica of it. Um, I haven't gotten it in, but I do like the look of the jacket. We'll see. Kind of cautiously look at the website maybe even just wait for my review or if I ever get it in. Um, but I'll let you guys know. I just think this is an interesting smaller brand that have, according to a lot of their details, one, it's pretty fairly priced. And then two, if everything that he says is true, that's some interesting materials to use as your first drop. So uh, just keep that in mind. So Akimbo Club Terrell Winston Zip Up. So he released a New York as well as he just dropped in LA. Uh, the LA one, I believe, was a pre-order. The New York one sold out pretty quickly. Uh, seems like it's gonna be a reoccurring uh, drop, I guess, collaboration with Akimbo Club, as well as Terrell Winston. There's talks that he might do like a Detroit one soon or like a Chicago one. Um, and I just think the shape of the hoodie looks really good online. I, again, I, I I haven't gone it in, but I do think this is a pretty interesting company where they do vintage sourcing, but they also make their own zip ups and hoodies and stuff like that. So um, be warned, it isn't cheap, uh, but it is kind of like an interesting hoodie shape. Gives kind of that old like Russell athletic slash um, champion sort of shape where it's kind of more relaxed. Next one is a Korean brand that I just well, not just, but this past few months, I've just bought my first product from them. It's called Demule. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but they have a lot of cool sort of almost Kiko adjacent products, um, that same sort of aesthetic, same sort of vibe. They just dropped two pairs of pants, one in like a brown, one in a black, and then they dropped a calf skin like leather jacket that I actually have. Let me bring it out. 
This is also going to be coming in my pickups video whenever I get down to recording it. But it's this calfskin Busan jacket. Um, really, really sick. Very, very soft leather. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, the only downside is that uh, they don't natively uh, allow you to check out unless you're in Korea. It doesn't have any US shipping. So you have to contact them directly and sometimes they respond, sometimes they don't. Um, but the leather is super soft. I think it's pretty good quality. I got the side zip uh, like Busan, which is their second release of this. They released one without the side um, striping and I think that's really cool. I got a size three, so that's how that fits on me. Fits sort of small because a size three is kind of like a large and I feel like I could fit like a medium in US clothing, but I picked up a large and I'm glad that I did. It fits perfectly. Norda. Norda is a Canadian uh, running hiking brand and I thought it was really cool because they use uh, like very technical materials like Dyneema. Um, so I thought it was very cool. They have really rugged outsoles where the whole goal for them is to go from high performance to high versatility. So you can wear it as a casual shoe, but it can also double as like a trail shoe, but also using it as like a casual shoe where it's like comfort, durability, and the technical aspect where you're always prepared. So I thought that was really cool. You can find a lot of their stuff on sale once sale season hits. Um, their products are a bit more expensive at retail, but I would recommend, again, just wait for sales. Next up is the Sean Watherspoon Adidas Gazelle. So this one kind of flew underneath the radar. Um, I believe it was limited to like 200, 300 pairs US, and it was a US exclusive that only dropped on Confirmed. Uh, so I've been waiting for the Sean Watherspoon Gazelles to drop. They dropped one before. I wasn't a big fan of that, and I know that each cut is gonna be like one of one because they used all different sorts of patterns. Um, I wasn't a big fan of how that shoe looked. Um, and then there's supposed to be a white and green pair and then this pair that just came out. I didn't realize that this was gonna use uh, like mushroom leather because I've been following uh, like Milo leather for a while and that is leather grown from mushrooms, like processed and turned into a leather-esque uh, like material. So I thought that was really cool. Again, this is a super, super small drop. So I don't know when they're gonna start releasing more Milo leather. Is it just not at scale? Is it too resource intensive? I'm not sure. Um, but hypothetically, if they do build it to scale, it would be more sustainable than um, a tannery or like anything like that. As long as you take into consideration like, oh, is that cow already gonna be killed? And you just use the hide. So it's like making most use out of the animal. But if you're looking at it from a carbon emission standpoint, I think mushroom leather is probably better carbon emissions as well as like water consumption um, as well as like resource and food consumption but that's for another day I thought this shoot looked cool I didn't pick it up because I didn't like how it like looked like I like how it looks but I wouldn't like it like for me you know like it doesn't fit in any of my current existing wardrobe I just wouldn't know where to put it I wouldn't want to buy another pair of shoes just to buy another pair of shoes um, and then just have it sitting in the closet. So um, I definitely do think it's a cool project and I wish Adidas would promote Milo leather and these cool little things rather than making, churning out a bunch of really shitty products that will break down quickly and all that stuff. So next up is the Adidas Samba Veg Tan. I believe it's the Olive Strata and Gum. Um, this is a very interesting one because it is a GR and the entire upper is of like a molded uh, like veg tan. So I think a lot of those sort of shoes fly underneath the radar because they're GRs, but like just because it doesn't have a collaboration name attached to it doesn't necessarily make it a bad or inferior product. Sometimes I feel like GRs, they're able to put more uh, money towards the actual material rather than paying a collaborator or paying or, or like doing that excess design work and you know like yada 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 I think some of the GRs if they had sale even you can get them at a perfect like at a good intersection of price quality and style this is another one where I don't think needed a collaborator but I really like the shoes 
This is the size Adidas German Army Trainer. The GAT, or the replica GAT shoes, basically. The BW Armies, I think that's what it's called. Um, those are essentially the German Army Trainers. They released um, in a light brown and an olive. I really like either pair. The quality looks fantastic. My biggest issue with BW uh, Army uh, from Adidas is that they're just... Oh, the two times that I previously purchased them, which was like years ago, um, the leather just was terrible and I just wanted to like like sell them the sole was uncomfortable the leather was terrible and it kept like pinching um, like in a weird way where if you have really cheap leather the leather doesn't bend properly and it just like pinches your skin um, but these two look like pretty good quality um, they didn't sell out so you might even be able to hit them for 15% off because I think size is doing that uh, like link in the description if you guys pick it up like let me know how you guys like it um, maybe I'll pick it up in the future. I don't know, but it looks like a really good um, Samba alternative because it basically has the same toe shape and then two if you are looking for a slightly cheaper Margiela German Army trainer, this could be a good starting point if you don't know whether or not that style will work with your current wardrobe Next up is the Carhartt 990 V6 uh, This is a New Balance's second collaboration with Carhartt where the first one was on the 990 V1 and then this upcoming one is the 990 V6. They're both supposedly inspired by local gyms and athletics and stuff like that. I can see it more for the V6. The V1, I mean, it just looks like a heritage shoe, so maybe it was kind of inspired by like those vintage like training boxing shoes. I'm not sure, but um, both of them look okay. Uh, the 990 V6, I, I like, like it, but I almost feel like it's too lazy. Like you can definitely have a GR colorway that looks exactly like this pretty much, except for maybe they change the inner lining instead of it being like olive green. Maybe they'll turn it black and that's about it. Then it, bam, it's a GR colorway without the car hard on the tongue. I feel like it would have been really cool if they incorporated some of their like heavy duty canvas into the upper. I know that New Balance is known for their suede's and some of their like minor leathers, but mostly suede and new bucks. Um, but I think it would have been a great opportunity to incorporate that sort of heavy duty canvas into the upper of a 990 V6. I thought that would have been, or at least maybe even like, I don't know, like maybe add like a gimmick to it. Maybe make it two layered with a suede underneath and then the canvas on the up top. Cause I do feel like this V6 kind of just gives me like that, like Detroit jacket vibe, especially because it's, that same tan color that a lot of Detroit colors or Detroit jackets come in. So I think one, I would have added some canvas to the upper, some heavy duty canvas to the upper. And then two, maybe the inner sock liner, a darker olive. I don't really like that lighter olive. And then shit, honestly, just adding canvas to the upper would have been cool. Next up is the anonymous club Pumas. I believe anonymous club is run by Shane Oliver, who was the previous creative director of Hood by Air. Um, he has his, he has another brand called Anonymous Club. I thought the Pumas that they did were really cool. Uh, they have that futuristic vibe, almost Yeezy-esque, where it has that organic sort of silhouette. Um, I thought the shoe was cool. Didn't decide to pick it up, but I do think that if you guys are looking to ver versatility, have a versatile. Uh, footwear rotation. I think a shoe like this could easily fit into a very unique slot in your rotation. Cactus plant, flea market, um, air flea tube. What the fuck, bro? Let me talk about this shoe. So this shoe is a very unique shoe. I don't like it, but I'm talking about it in the releases because I feel like that shoe is weird in all the right ways, but also I just don't like the shoe. It's weird and it's cool, but I don't like it. It's like the shoe itself is very bulbous. It literally looks like a tire, which I get the idea of it where they're supposed to essentially create like a crazy exaggerated version of the OG waffle runner slash like, you know, and, and adding that cactus plant flea market type of vibe to it. And I, I think it's cool. I understand it, I just don't like the look of it. I just can't imagine anybody really pulling it off. And also, even if they pull it off, right? 
how long can you wear a shoe like that? That is not something where uh, you're, it's not something that people are gonna be like, oh yeah, that's like my daily like trainer. No, it's it's definitely like a one-off thing. If anybody decides to undies it, they'll wear it at max five times before they decide to sell it on to another person or they just keep it in their closet and forget about it. I think that's the problem with creating really cool, unique shoes that are kind of at scale is that you create these products that people buy because of the hype and the resale value. They wear five times and then it goes on and on and keeps selling and selling and selling. And nobody really actually wears it long term. Because I, again, I can't imagine anybody just wearing that shoe. I can imagine people wearing the Airflea one, but not the Grinch version, but the OG version that they never launched because it was a kind of dunk adjacent. And I feel like that is um, a more publicly acceptable looking, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm sure there's gonna be a handful of people wearing that Cactus Plant Air Fleet too, but I really doubt it's gonna be most people. And there's probably, what, 20,000 pairs of each colorway coming out? I doubt 1% of them are gonna be wearing them regularly. So, um, yeah, that's just something, that's my idea where you have to create a product that's cool, that's uh, creative and sort of um, kind of pushes the boundaries, but at the same time you have to dampen it to a point to where it's like, will it land in like the terms of the market? You know, I making the shoe just because you can make it doesn't necessarily make it like a good, cool shoe. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking shit. Man, forget about me. I'm just some fucking 20 something year old guy. Uh, talking about shit that I barely know about. All right, next up, rumors and upcoming shoes. The Mew Mew New Balances. I think this is sort of like a trend that's gonna be coming up where a lot of those very, very minimal soul trainers are gonna be come back, are going to be coming back. So I guess some, that could be it, is that um, I also put this on here, is the Caperni Pumas. Um, the, both the Mew Mew New Balances as well as the Caperni Pumas um, they all have a very sleek sole, very thin, almost non-existent sole. You can also see that in the Vibram 5 uh, like toe sneaker boot looking thing, uh, where those are kind of becoming more popular, uh, where everything is getting kind of close to the ground with a very, very minimal sole where it almost gives it that, um, that ballerina shoe type of-esque vibe. Um, I think that's going to become more and more prevalent, uh, especially First, it's gonna start in like the designer clothing and then it's gonna trickle down into the sportswear type of stuff. Um, so yeah, I think that's really cool. Uh, next up is some more Yeezy prototypes. I think this is sort of like a, a trope with all the coffee breaks that I love to talk about, I guess, Yeezy prototypes, but they showed off a prototype of the 450, of the, of the 1050 boot, of the foam boot, which I think is really cool. I kind of wish they came out with the foam runner boot. I think that would have been so crazy, as well as more colorways of that uh, like insulated boot, as well as the um, the knit runner boot. I think all of those are gonna be like crazy designs, but there's only one colorway of them that came out. So unfortunate, and I guess a waste of a skew if they don't release more. Another one that's upcoming is 2024 uh, Nike SB Valentine's Day Dunks. It's gonna be a two pack and it's supposed to be, um, if I remember correctly, it was the Red String of Faith, or Fate. fate. Um, this is like, I, I believe it's an Asian um, story where two people are connected by a thin red uh, string of fate. They made a movie about it. Um, yeah, one, I think it gives me that old school Nike SB Dunk vibes. Um, the leather looks good. The suede looks good, the new buck looks good, and like just the shape of it looks really, really, really good. So I'm a big fan of them. Uh, some people are sitting, or s not sitting, some people are sleeping on them, and I hope they continue to sleep on them because I think this is a very cool release that's upcoming. And that isn't like, oh wow, that's like a huge collab shoe. No, it's just a cool, clean shoe, very wearable. A lot of Valentine's Day dunks and shoes in general can easily fall into that, that, that bin of corny. And uh, this 
is not corny, luckily. April skateboarding dunk lows. I think this is really cool, but it also, I'm not planning on picking it up. I think it's a really cool shoe with that mesh and that almost like Neptune Korean suede upper uh, with the silver swoosh. I think it looks really, really cool, but just personally, I won't pick it up, but I think it's one of the best, most wearable Nike dunks of this year. Next up is the Supreme Camel Box logo. I know I probably should have talked about this when the preview came out for Supreme, uh, but the Camel Box logo is a callback to one of their old 90s box logos, especially that gray with the camo that is like super, super OG. Um, fingers crossed that maybe I get the cop, but uh, super, super, um, almost like a historic box logo because that's like a grail to so many people. And now that it's being re-released, I think a lot of people, I think it's gonna sell out instantly, like of course, but I definitely think that that's gonna give people an opportunity to own a Camel Box logo without needing to, you know, splurge out. Especially a Camo embroidered hoodie box logo. Like I think the last Camo box logo um, was the Brooklyn store opening and that was a shirt. Next up is the Jordan 1 OG 85 Neutral Gray. Uh, that is coming out in a month or so, I believe the end of November or mid-November. Um, this is their first OG85 um, low release. Uh, so they did the neutral gray highs, now they're doing the neutral gray lows. Um, hopefully that means they're going to start releasing more of those OG85 lows, like the Chicago, Bread, you know, Royal, like all that other stuff, maybe even metallic i don't know like that'd be pretty cool but this gives people an opportunity again to pick up that 85 shape without needing to one pay two grand to get it or two they buy it and shit just cracks and crumbles all over you the whales bonner 2024 release um they're releasing three different sambas personally i don't i'm not a huge fan of any of the color combination especially i don't really like the faux fur on the upper. I mean, I get aesthetically why they might want to do that, but me personally, I'll be passing on like all of these. The burgundy with the baby blue on the inner lining is probably the best one, but the other ones, I just can't, I just can't pull it off. So uh, it's a pass for me, but this is upcoming if you guys are interested in it. J -j 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 Jound uh, 2002R Storm Blue. So I know that it's inspired by the dark stormy clouds of Montreal during the fall winter time. I like the shoe. I like the 2002R, right? But I think it's definitely lower on my, I guess, pantheon of Jound releases, if that makes sense. Uh, just because I think that like darker like stone blue, I think it just doesn't hit as hard um, color like palette wise as their previous releases. Um, they just nail it. Every time they use that light brown, they just nail it. It just looks fantastic. Um, especially that like 992, the 990 V3, both the Montreal exclusive as well as uh, the OG, OG ones. Um, I just feel like this dark gray bluish color, although I think it looks cool. It almost looks like a pebble blue or like that sort of vibe. Um, but I just think blue in general, um, that it, ju it just doesn't hit as hard. Um, if you guys are going for it, it releases, I believe the 27th. So keep out for that. Um, Another thing to keep in mind is that I think it is confirmed that there is going to be another 2002R coming out in a few months, uh, so keep out for that. I believe that one will have a similar upper color, but also a dark sole, so we'll see how that looks. Next one is a leak. Um, this is the Nike SB Futura collaboration. Uh, I don't know if this will be a general release or even um, a release to most people. It could also be another friends and family, who knows, but it has that icy blue uh, cyan sole with, you know, like Futura, like upper graphics. Um, I think that it's a cool shoe. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the colors used because a lot of it is that bright, bright cyan. Um, although it is, again, it's cool looking. Um, I hope that people are able to get it. Not something that I can wear, but maybe it would be cool to have as like 
statement or like even for like decoration or as art or something like that if you guys are into that um i think like Futura hasn't released a shoe with nike in quite some time uh, so this could also be like something historic uh, just because all his previous uh work with nike has really um garnered a lot of fans like the uncle dunks and stuff like that so keep that in mind the Ama Manier Jordan 5. So I know there's two colorways coming out, but the best colorway is the white colorway. I really like that vintage blue that they use. Almost like that one Jordan 5. It's like the Lancy Jordan 5, if I remember correctly. Um, I also like the details that like Ama Manier uses for their sock liner, because it is the Ama Manier A logo just repeated and like woven into that textile. And I think it just looks so like luxe. Uh, they did that for the airship as well and i do like jordan 5s when they don't have that huge padding um, i know it's not the og way i know that the ogs had that thicker padding um, but that padding just for me makes it more uncomfortable to wear just because it like rubs against each other when you're walking um, but yeah i think it's a great looking shoe i'm definitely more in favor of the white pair versus the darker color um, but I think they did a pretty good job. I think that's probably one of the best fives, you know, in general, just in collaboration wise, that Nike and Jordan have ever put out. Next one is kind of an interesting thing that I wasn't really expecting is that Clot Adidas uh, 2024. Uh, Clot, um, after their last What the Clot dunk, uh, they left Nike and then they felt like they weren't being appreciated enough and they weren't given enough opportunities at Nike and thus hopped over to Adidas and now they have some crazy shoes. Um, I really do like the way that they're pushing, you know, what Adidas can do with the Superstar because it has a really crazy sole, has some tassels. Um, I kind of see it has some overlap with the foot industry collaborations where it has that like nice material, but also that like almost dress shoe-esque sort of vibe. Um, I think I think it's very interesting that he was able to drum up that. I know a lot of people are saying that it's generic or like, oh, Adidas only has, you know, two or three models that collaborators are interested in. And I'm like, same with Nike. Um, but also I think Clot, this kind of, instead of feeding into the hype, I think this gives it more of like an elevated, like I'm creating my own sort of like take on the model rather than a colorway or a material flip or something like that. So, all right, now we're in the archive portion. The archive, uh, it's nothing new, TS slash KK jacket. So the TS uh, KK jacket is a very interesting leather Japanese tool wear jacket. Um, I'll leave a description down below with more details about it, but it's 100% Italian calfskin. Um, it's 10 of each size, if I remember correctly. There's only an extra small left, but I thought it would be really cool to talk about just because it's made in the US. It's a replica Japanese workwear jacket, but created with crazy materials and like, you know, like crazy zippers where it has that utility edge to it. Um, I think it looks terrific. I think they did a great job with the fit and then the pattern of it. It looks A1. Next up, uh, this is way back, but the Takashi Dunk Low. So uh, the Takashi Dunk Low for me was one of my first dunk pickups ever. Um, the the Takashi one was a part of the silver box era. And then the Takashi two was a part of the gold box era. Um, I don't know too much about the skater behind it, but I just remember it being like such a up there shoe. And I know that they did like a weird re-release of the Takashi one, I think in the cyan box era, if I remember correctly. Um, but the materials were terrible and all that, but I would like a real faithful re-release of the Takashi one. Um, it's just a simple black, nice leather, nice suede with a gold metallic swoosh, super, super clean. Um, a lot of those dunks in the silver box era that aren't like the super, super hyped ones, their materials are just as good as the hyped ones or the collaborative ones, like all that stuff. So I think you guys should definitely go back and look at the Nike SB archives and 
maybe look at some of the silver box or the gold box era stuff and you'll be able to find a pretty good selection of like bangers really i think nike's quality during that time as well as their coolness was like honestly untouchable especially compared to now where they're just constantly releasing junk the cause air jordan 4 this is uh, a pair of shoes where I re remember the release and it was just honestly so crazy where they released the gray um, in, if I remember correctly, the Brooklyn Museum. Um, and that was so crazy with the uh, like Nike stash there and all that stuff. So um, I would love for Cause to do another release with Jordan brand. Uh, I know that they did a small run just for Cause himself. Um, of Air Jordan 1 Lowe's uh, in four different colorways. I know that they uh, did a Sakai triple collaboration, but I don't think that really hit just because one, um, the, the Blazer low that they chose was a very, I think Blazers had their moment and then it, it like quickly left because it's, it's not my favorite Nike shoe. I know a lot of people love the Blazer high and a lot of people are ride or die Blazers, but um, it is a relatively uncomfortable pair of shoes and it's just so basic that it's kind of hard to get excited over it. This is some crazy one. Hiroshi Fujiwara Air Jordan 3 sample. Um, this wasn't the Jordan 3 that came out, which was like that white and black, almost like that Orca colorway, if I remember correctly, or that um, Concord look and colorway. This was when they had that white, black, and blue. Like, I believe there's one of 10. Um, that's such a sick looking shoe. I really released, I really wish they released that version um, instead of the white and black. Uh, just because the white and black is just too simple. The material was pretty meh, um, as well as there was, it, it wasn't stored properly. So the back tabs would yellow to hell. Um, and it was, it was pretty tragic that a lot of them honestly are just yellow to shit right now. Oh, and this is a um, an old one, but had a recent sort of resurgence, which is the Nike um, Blazer High. I know I just said that it's hard to get excited over Blazers, but the Supreme Blazer Highs, the OG OG ones with the white, black, and red, that's when that material flip was everything. It gave it that Chanel purse sort of luxe feeling with the snakeskin swoosh and that like that Gucci like back stitching with the metal little tassel it was it was perfecto and that's what I honestly really wanted from that black re-release but I fucking hated that black blazer it I mean I got it in hand and it was terrible it was it was like, like the leather was a GR quality leather um, it definitely wasn't as padded as it was before the tongue wasn't that padded the uh, like the leather just felt terrible the snakeskin swoosh they shouldn't have children a golden snakeskin swoosh hell just give me a blacked out or a white snakeskin swoosh i don't know why they like fucked it up so bad and i you know and like the denim one looked terrible as well but i am after that release it just made me want the ogs so much so much more next up is the nike htm2 run boot uh, this is a older HTM uh, model and HTM stands for Hiroshi, Tinker, and Mark Parker. Um, the HTM run boot is that sort of slip on kind of, it feels like the same sort of vein as the, uh, the sock runner that they released or that fragment released. Uh, that also had an HTM version of it, but I thought the HTM run boot looked really cool with the free sole and that like spray painted swoosh. I think it gives it that sort of like, like, oh shoot, like that's like, that's something, you know? Um, and I really wish that Nike would bring back that sort of like innovation, I don't know, precursor. Cause I think a lot of, a lot of talent really left Nike and, you know, and I think that's partially because of one that people weren't allowed to express their weird ideas as much and also because of how big Nike's gotten, now there's paralysis of choice where like, what should we do? They're not as agile as well as Nike wants to control everything because so much is at stake. 
Um, so all those things build up to the state of apathy where most of us are at right now, where Nike releases a bunch of stuff, nah. And it's only a handful of times when we're kind of like, okay, cool, interesting. Like the Air Flea, like I just talked about, where that's kind of interesting, but at the same time, there are millions of Air Jordan 1 mids that we don't give a shit about. Last but not least is um, a pair of shoes that I actually did a review on on my channel is the Casina Dunk Low. Uh, these two are a fantastic pair of dunks. Um, big, big fan. I love them. They're probably one of my favorite dunks of all time. Both colorways are superb. Quality is great. Um, I just think that it'd be awesome if they were to do a Nike SB dunk. I'm curious what sort of um, story would be behind it because the story of the Dunk Lows, it, it was a Nike sportswear release um, and it was the story between somebody going from uh, their hometown to a big city and then coming back to their hometown, almost like a homecoming shoe. Um, and I know that they did an Air Max One release, which was, you know, based on like, uh, like traditional Korean ducks uh, that people are being gifted during like, you know, like weddings and stuff like that. Um, so if they were to do a dunk low or even a dunk high, to be honest, uh, I, I'd be really interested to see what their story and what concept is behind that. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching another uh, coffee break. I will talk to you guys next month. I will be in Korea, so maybe I'll be recording in Korea. Maybe I'll record when I come back, but I'll see y'all bitches later. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you a bitch. Please like and subscribe.